Salve Club. It's Thursday, August 15th. I'm JP Mestanza, and this is Phuket Extra, brought to you by PSD Windows and Doors. Let's start with our top story. The labor attaché at the Myanmar Embassy in Bangkok and an advisor to the Thai Minister of Labor here in, in Thailand, they were both in Phuket yesterday to visit the eight Myanmar workers injured in the building collapse in Rawai on Sunday and to attend the funerals of the three workers who died in the collapse. The officials both inspected the building collapse site, headed to Vashida Phuket Hospital to hand out blankets to some workers who remain injured, and then spoke to six other injured workers who were already discharged from the hospital before heading to the funerals at Wat Sawang Arom in Rawai for the three men who died. The employer Phuket Built Co. Ltd. is legally registered with the Thai Government Social Security Fund and the fund will pay up to 2 million baht of medical expenses for each of the workers while the families of the deceased will receive compensation which about in total amounts to just over 750,000 baht each along with 30,000 baht in funeral expenses each. VIP Thailand issued a statement which read on behalf of the owner of VIP Mercury, they'd like to express their deepest condolences, saying that the collapse was the reception building at the front of the project, separate from the main parts of the project, the condominium buildings, construction of which is ongoing. An investigation is now underway, and VIP Thailand says if they receive any official reports, they will pass them along to all concerned parties immediately. The, the statement went on to thank all public and private agencies who provided assistance. The two Uyghur men who were arrested and accused of carrying out a vicious bombing at the Erawan Shrine four years ago in Bangkok that killed 20 people, well, those two men might actually see the inside of a courtroom by the end of the year, according to a report by Coconuts Bangkok. Yusufu Meirali and Adem Karadag were arrested weeks after the Erawan Shrine bombing back in August of 2015, considered to be the deadliest attack in modern Thai history. Their case was originally sent to a military tribunal where it languished with little progress since early 2016, which saw procedural delays and more. But when a civilian government came to power last month, it dissolved the military junta and sent all of the criminal prosecutions back to the civilian courts, including this case. Coconut spoke to the lawyer of both men, who says he hopes they appear in court next month. A Pattaya veterinarian is warning doll lovers to stop buying toy ducks for their pets to play with after removing 32 small rubber duckies from an ailing bulldog's stomach. In a Facebook video post, the veterinarian described that the owner of the bulldog named Davil phoned him saying the dog vomited up five rubber ducks and wanted an x-ray done at the vet's office, which revealed so many more and surgery was scheduled and performed to remove the toys before they moved into the animal's intestines. The 50 kilo dog recovered well from the surgery according to reports and their veterinarian gives a warning to people saying this was not the first time they performed such a surgery. Who can actually bring it back after this? Welcome back to Phuket Extra. An event that was planned for November in Chiang Mai was meant to set a new Guinness World Record, hoping to launch 20,000 Sky Lanterns. But the 33rd Military Circle, the Army, has now canceled the event, saying it poses a danger to air traffic and the environment. The Guinness World Record attempt was meant to take place in November in Chiang Mai to mark Loi Kertong Festival. It was actually meant for mostly Chinese tourists. The record was simple, the largest number of sky lanterns to be floated in the air at a single event. But the whole thing was slammed by conservation groups claiming that the release of sky lanterns is not only not a custom of the Lana, the name of the ancient kingdom in northern Thailand, but it also disrupts aviation and the environment as it litters the countryside while also starting accidental fires. Conservation groups reportedly praised the army's decision. An otter found exhausted and sick washed ashore Bangtao Beach at about 3 a.m. on Sunday. 
It's now receiving care in Phuket and will be moved to a wildlife station in Penya once its health has been restored. The otter was found with a wound on its chin and other ailments. Experts confirmed the mammal found is an adult Asian small clawed otter. The animal is now under the care of Anon Vet Clinic in Dalan. And that's it for Phuket Extra, brought to you by PSD Windows and Doors. For safe, secure, and soundproof windows, visit pvcphuket.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, click that subscribe button to check out all of our future videos. If you're watching us on Facebook, give us a like on the Phuket News page. From all of us here at the Phuket News Center, thank you for watching, and until tomorrow, stay classy, Phuket. Phuket's rapid modernization has made it one of the world's premier holiday destinations. Investors can still buy quality condominiums for as low as 75,000 US dollars and luxury properties can go all the way up to 20 million. Condominiums in Phuket are a safe, secure bricks and mortar investment offering foreigners freehold ownership. Call or email Thai Residential. Phuket's number one trusted real estate advisor to find your perfect Phuket property.